Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here. And this is uh, After Hours, a uh, little video I'm putting together. Um, uh, it's Monday evening. Again, I told you I'd be back on the job um, early in the week because I was pretty sick over the weekend. I couldn't really put out some charts and stuff. We did a good watch list video. We did, uh, we're going to review those trades today. And I got a couple new ones for the HPS watch list. All right, so let's uh, let's get started here. I'm actually going to be doing some work, um, doing some charting. I'm not going to be paying attention to the chat room that much. I'm not going to be paying attention to anything. I'm going to try to get this done, not get distracted. So if uh, you are trying to contact me, I apologize. I am going rogue. So um, the first thing I'm talking about is the Occidental Petroleum. Started that position today. We're going to talk about it. Uh, then we'll talk about the Apple trade and some other trades going into tomorrow, the HPS uh, setups, also the scalps that are working good in the bot. That's uh, that was very uh, good today. You know the trading bot, and I'm going to be setting up alerts on that later today too. Right now there is a bot trade going on. Believe it or not, I don't have the video on it, but if you're on DayTradingRadio.com, you can see it. I'm going to put it on. Uh, I want to put it on there right there. You can see it's active right now. It's up 50. Is that 50? Yeah. And it's after hours. So it's going to be a little bit different. <coughs> you can hear my cough if I talk too much. Um, but if you're watching the show, you can see the bot here. And you can always see that on DTR2. That's on the, the members dashboard, the secondary auxiliary channel in the lower left-hand corner. Make sure you push the play button on that. And I have that always broadcast in there. There's three scripts running. Today it was up about 350. Um, it's up a little now after hours. It's, it starts fresh, uh, fresh at six o'clock, and I'll let it run overnight. Just remember, it's it's in sim mode right now. We're still in the final phases of testing some some scripts, some uh, trailing stops, some adjustments and stuff. But very close to um, you know saying that hey, that's, this thing is good to go. So let's go back to the new HPS setup today. The new HPS setup um, is on the screen, Occidental Petroleum. We started seeing, um, again, this whole oil service sector. Let's actually um, bring up a chart here. We call the, the o OIH, or oil service sector. A lot of stocks that fall under that. Schlumberger, SLB, recently have been in this. We had a nice trade off the lows and continue to hold it here. And it's, it seems to be holding a nice consolidation and looking to move a little bit higher. It's embedded up here. Embedded means the stochastics are holding above the the uh, 80 line up here, the green line versus the red line. Now, if these terms are are new to you, then um, the best thing you can do is just do some do some uh, research or actually go to Day Trader Radio. I have uh, on YouTube, uh, Day Trader Rockstar channel, Day Trader Rockstar channel. And you'll see hundreds and hundreds of educational videos or go to Day Trading Radio where we have a lot of courses and a lot of videos also on this. And this is what I uh, teach each and every day, trade in the markets. Um, so, again, I'm not going to go into every term, but just remember this is a very successful method of trading. So if you want to um, learn to trade this way, Order canceled. you'll eventually uh, learn these I'll learn these terms, and that was the bot. The bot just took off. Uh, looks like it just took a profit there. It did a small one, small profit. Could have actually continued to push higher, but again, three three scripts are running there. Three scripts. So one script actually has a safety um, safety uh, net, I call it, and it sometimes takes it off when it feels there's maybe some weakness around the corner. Other ones have a trailing stop, which this would, if this had a trailing stop, it would still be in it. But for some reason, it took it off for a profit here. And um, that's just how that works. So um, <clears throat> the OIH, the oil service sector, seems to be one of the sectors that I'm starting to key in on this week. OXY is one of the stocks because of multiple different uh, things. We have a, a bunch of lines on this chart. Now, this is uh, what we call Occidental Petroleum. If we zoom out here, you can actually see there's a repeating pattern. This, this downward channel, 
break higher, downward trend line, break higher, new downward trend line, break higher. You know, this is the nature of the beast, too. It's how stocks usually do move to the left. So, I mean, but a lot of times you can actually break down and continue moving down. But to identify when a stock pivots, and a pivot is really a change of direction that's noticeable on the chart, either going from up to down or down to up, we, we specialize, I specialize in, you know, showing you where those pivots are, and those trades become an important, um, you know, area to concentrate on or to execute a trade. And we tighten that up, and we get in on a very, um, you know, much cleaner time frame. Maybe we'll break it down even to a smaller time frame. Right now, I'm looking at a bird's eye view of Occidental Petroleum, and again, just showing the basic concepts of trading. You have this downward channel and a break higher. Now, what we start to see here is the possibility of this bigger trend finally breaking because we start to see a higher low being put in and then another higher low. But then we fail and come back down and then rebound. And there's a lot of, you know, this is what I call the roadmap of the market. There's a lot of things to learn here. So you had this underlying downward trend line and you you see we bounced off of it, we bounced off of it, we bounced again, we came down, we kind of flushed through it and got back above it and came back through it. Now we're back up to it. Now, the truth is, you know, trend lines work. You can see that they work. Algorithms um, are easily enough, you're able to calculate them, you know, two points and extend those two points and trade any time the price comes down to that extension line. You don't even have to have this on the chart to know where that is. You know, a computer could generate that and have that internally programmed. So well, I like to identify those low for you so we know where those that levels are. So right at this point, we're at this trend line again, but there's uh, some key uh, things that are happening. First of all, this quick uh, cross back up here. And I call it the next Nike, the Nike check mark. And uh, Nike check mark is basically a, a check in the stochastic. It's a very steep, not a not a slow rolling up, not a, a rounded little bump, nothing, but an aggressive, almost a V bottom. And I, it's basically a Nike check mark. That's what I like to call it. They, th those um, signals tend to, if we go back to that, lead to big explosive moves. All right, here's one back here. Um, there's a, a slight one there, but this is another good one right here. So we might be catching this early on and to confirm or to be a little safer on our entry here, even though I took an early, I took an entry today into weakness on Occidental Petroleum, OXY, we bought the weakness, we, we saw it selling off and I said, you know what, got to buy. I'm not sure. Yeah, I am sure of this. Uh, and got in down here, I think it was earlier in the day, maybe it was 10, 11 o'clock, and um, it put it back a little bit further, but at that point, we started reversing and starting to see this thing close that gap, exactly what we wanted to see in this stock. Now, that's my early entry. To, to add to that entry, we're gonna put this as an HPS setup, a high probability setup based off of, you know, the, the Nike check, check, uh, check mark, the downward channel, which looks like it's gonna be broken to the upside, you also have an underlying 50 period moving average. You can barely see that underneath the downward trend line. And um, some other things, you have a, a trend line that comes up, rising trend line will be used as a target, which is above 68. That's where our target's actually gonna be. Now, it might not look like one, but um, you know, again, HPS is really trying to determine the best place to get into a trade to make the biggest and fastest move in a three to five day period. So a break of this pivot area here would break us through that trend line, through the 50. The, the, the stochastics are going to be in an aggressive motion. So everything will point to a, a very strong move if we break back above that candle. Cool. All right. So we're going to make that alert, that high of that candle. So that's what I wanted to do for you today and get that out. And then I have another alert I'm going to put out on Yum Brands, Yum Brands China, based off of the option activity that we're seeing today in it. Um, so let's set this one up. So I want to go to another chart. I go to my chart where I'm setting this up and we can see that the high here, 66.70, 
So I probably want to make my, we can make our buy trigger 6675 would be fine. So I want to adjust this to 6675. All right, let's move this down here. We'll point that line right like that. And this area over here is going to be our profit zone. And we're going to adjust this. This was an old alert, which never, qual never, never triggered. We were still looking at this, uh, this area over here, but we never broke above our pivot area up here. So now we're actually resetting. And now we're going to look at this pivot zone. If we break through that, then it will give us our buy trigger. So always revisiting these interesting uh, setups. All right, so this one, <clears throat> like I said, the 50, uh, if we break that level, well, that's what over on here. I'm on the daily. All right, good. Hold on one second. What you're seeing, I'm, I wanted to sh this chart here is a little bit different. I, have a, I wanted to make sure you saw this downward trend line. This is the one I'm working with. And there's an upward trend line, if we zoom all the way out, that goes all the way back to the lows, tags it here in April, tags it again here in November, and pushes up. So that's our target, but you're not seeing it on the other one. But I'm going to tell you what that is. Um, we're going to look at 68, and probably 68 to 70 is going to be our target zone on this. Like I said, you might not think that's enough of an area, consider a buy trigger 66.75, but you know we're in a position, we're making money on our calls, and that's what we're doing. These are short-term swing trades. There's an opportunity of this going much higher. This is just the beginning. This is our early area. This is our first level to take it off. So we're gonna move this down here a bit. Call it. It's called sixty eight to seventy. About there, sixty eight to seventy. All right, and our stop is going to be whenever we take this, and this is kind of a, a cool little setup because once we break out and actually buy on a buy trigger, it's versus on buying a buy zone. If the HPS composes of is composed of longs and shorts, and usually two type of alerts, you have a buy trigger or a buy zone, a buy zone or a short zone or a short trigger. In this case, we're talking long. You could either have a buy trigger, which is buying on a trigger of strength, or a zone is a pullback to an area of interest. In this case, we're buying on strength, and so we're going to call this a buy trigger, and it's just one number. Sometimes I could give you a, an area to watch, and that would be a buy zone. The stop always goes in. Always have you know each each setup by I, um, I show you usually has a standard um, stop. In this case. We usually take the pivot low, the closest pivot low, if it's not too much. You know, we want to keep that that stop within 2 to 3%. Um, this is pretty pretty tight for this. And remember, this stop doesn't come into play unless the buy trigger is actually broken. So we'd have to break out and then reverse and take out the stop for this to effectively uh, cancel and stop out. Now, this... All these numbers and everything, if you're not familiar with it, because you probably might be seeing this, this is part of an HPS, which the members of Day Trading Radio get each week. So I'm doing an update uh, because this is the last week of our open house, and I figured, well, you know, um, I'll throw this out. We've got a lot to talk about, and I think it'll be a good educational video for anybody out there. The um, Let's see here. 
So that's where we are right now. The let's see if I could actually. way out here oh we're gonna leave it just like that all right so what happens is each one of these numbers the profit zone the buy trigger the uh, stop trigger gets placed in the platform I'm gonna show you the platform in a second so and it gets you know and that platform is connected to the members dashboard and the dashboard is connected to everything the members wanted to be connected. You can connect it to your email, your text message, your phone and stuff. So that way, anything that triggers on the dashboard, any of these alerts automatically get sent to you. So you don't have to be in front of your computer to know that there's a great buy trigger happening on Occidental. Because I'm setting it up tonight and, and programming it into the system, all members will get an alert once this breaks at 66.75 buy trigger. Same thing if it hits its profit zone, same thing if it hits its stop. It, once it's active... It's active in the system and will continue to give you alerts if it uh, if it if it triggers. <clears throat> so I'm going to publish this right now. Um, I want to call it HP uh, o OXY, and let's say um, turn line. It trigger. It's a long. This is using the Trading View platform the chart pattern, and it usually is published private. And private locks it up for members. So I want to publish it private, and then you're gonna. I'm gonna get the uh, chart here. It's gonna be all done. Actually, you can follow me on TradingView also. Day Trader Rockstar is the name. But most of them are set to private. But I do every every week usually send out a f couple uh, couple freebies for out there for a little promotional purpose. So this is our fi finished product. <clears throat> and this, this will continue to run behind the scenes. All right, so here's the HPS platform, and what I'm going to do is go behind the scenes on this. This is some of the order, order pending. pending. That's another bot trade here taking place in the background that you just heard. Um, the ones in the ones that have a green means they activated. After it's activated, first of all, if it, they should all say in the beginning if they're just setting being set up. Order, order filled. filled. Oh, and the market just dropped there hard, so it just got uh, actually. Whipped around there. The market just dropped hard. I just noticed that. Popped and dropped. Go figure on that one. Um, anyway, what I was getting at was the... The... Um, oh, the setups here. So the, the key here, here, the L represents the positions. Um, it's longs in this case. The green or watching means that not, the trigger hasn't been hit or the buy zone hasn't been hit. It's an actively watching for the price to be hit to qualify for a, you know, an alert to go out. And once it qualifies a green, it will turn green. It'll, that will send out the email. And that uh, trade will be active. I, I'll usually be in it. Some people, you have a choice of, you know, you'll get the email, you get the text message, however you want to set that up. That's up to you. And how you want to proceed is also up to you. But I'm usually in these HPSs. Gold means it hit its target and the trade is completed. Red means it hit its stop before it hits target. Gold means it hit its target before it hit its stop. So, hence, watching means it's not active yet, and green means it's currently active. All right. So, you can see Eli Lilly currently active, um, JP Morgan currently active. And I actually uh, got back into JP Morgan today, too. So, that actually goes well with that. Maybe I'll discuss some of those in a bit with you. So what I'm going to do here is go in the back end. I want to put the, new, order pending. put the new setup here. OXY. Let's see what I have here. Accidental Petroleum. 
let me set this up here. 66, uh, why did I put 55 there? 66, 75. <laughs> good, Johnny. Your eyes are really good today. Now, that's the lower lower number, so it's going to hit that one first. And that's, lots of times I want to put a space there in case it gaps up. I don't want it to gap through that. So I'm going to put a little higher number there. We're going to say 67. My eyes are getting bad here since I've been had this bad cold. <laughs> Target zone, 68 to 70. 68 to 70. Stop loss, 67. And then um, I'm going to go all the way down here. And we're going to, I want to put in the code for the chart. That's been, this is a custom board I had built years ago, and it still works great. And we're going to save that. Now I want to make sure I have the HPS stock in our HPS list here. If we don't, I have to add it, OXY. It's there, Occidental Petroleum. That's my HPS 40 list. And now if we go back here, you'll see it. It's right here. And it says watching. Now give it a second for the last price to get filled in. It has a cron job. It's going to go grab the price right now and uh, fill it in. Tradeometer ES yes, oversold. oversold. Trade Domino YM oversold. So if I refresh that, I'll give it usually trade Domino and here. Q oversold. In the background, you hear what's called the uh, tradeometer. And the tradeometer is a great, great, great uh, indicator we use here at Day Trader Radio. It's a buy and sell scalping tool. And it tells us short term overbought and oversold levels. All right. So now I have that that first one set up. It's in a watching state. O X Y, and I want to add it one more to the uh, list here. All right, finally updated the price there. So the price is updated. Our entry price, our target, and uh, this could be found on the top of your trader dashboard. So if you go to your dashboard on the top, you'll see HPS, and that brings you right to this list. When you click on the video here, it'll bring you right to the video that is that goes along with the HPS watch list. Every every week we put out a watch list for this, and that um, will be right here. You'll see that pop up. Order canceled. All right, another profit. Looks like a profit. I don't know. Is it a profit? Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> and uh, that's that right there. There's a, a nice little video that explains everything on our set our watch list for this week January 28th all right now I'm sending this video out with this with this chart underneath it the two different charts one's a different little different trend lines you don't see on the other one just remember you know the reason we're looking at this is this downward trend line the rising trend line the targets gonna be up here the extremely bullish breakout will be a break of the trend line and the 50 period moving average combined with the positive stochastic flow and the breakout here and the pivot breakout. So that is set up and in the system now. And I want to put one more in the system. It's going to be Yum Brands, Yum China. <clears throat> and here's another trend line. Now, lots of times... Stocks that make it on this list are called divergent setups. Um, they're our number one go-to uh, trade. If you're going to be successful, you got to learn how to trade divergences. That is, that is by far the best of the best. And um, I love that so much. I'm super passionate about it. I love teaching it. And I, I really, truly believe after 24 years now trading full-time, after wait, wait, waiting and weeding out all the... Uh, all different things. 
learning how to trade back in the 90s, um, I could truly say that divergence trading is, is one of the highest probability uh, trading methods that I use. What comes along with that, or how to make that work for you, is it just doesn't happen. You have to have discipline. You have to know the right setups. You have to know the market conditions underlying what's happening around the setup when the setup develops. Are the market conditions um, favorable for for the divergence? And you know, we there's certain things we know about it and feel, and you know, there's just a kind of experience that helps us determine that. And that comes with time. It does come with the experience. So here we have Yum. And this is kind of another situation. It's not a, a, a extremely bullish stock. I mean, it's way off the highs, which is 48. A nice gradual, gradual, gradual pullback. We've banged up against the 200, threw it once, came back, hit it again, came back, hit it again, gap down, eventually came back, hit it again, hit it again, hit it again, pulled back, hit it again, pulled back, and hit it again. So, you know, this is banging up against this trend line, plus the 200 period moving average, plus we start to get a little turn back up on the stochastics, and that's very, very bullish. <clears throat> All right, so back to the Yum MC. <laughs> I call it Yum MC, like Young MC. Um, Again, not that much, not that different from the, the other one. We're, we're dealing with a kind of a pivot area up here where we want to really buy the breakout, which would confirm a break of a lot of different things. A break of this last pivot up here, right here, this, this one candle, a break of that level would confirm a breakout of the trend line, the 200 period moving average, and the recent little candle high there. All right, so that's... Uh, that would be a, that's standing out as a good buy zone for me. The highs there was um, the high was thirty six twenty eight. Now you could give yourself a little thirty six thirty five maybe. That sounds about around thirty six thirty five. Thirty six thirty five. Let me make sure that's all right. Or you could actually take it with a break above that recent high over here. Which I haven't decided how long ago. That's 36.64. Um, 34, 36.64. Now, there's going to be earnings out on this, I believe, end of the week, Thursday. So that's a big, big red flag because that could gap down. It could really, uh, or it could gap way up. You know, it's just, that's that's the danger of this. So take that with a, you know, take that in your analysis and in, in your in your your risk analysis of this trade if you want to hold into earnings or are you going to look for a move here? Because if we are going to break above this level, it might be on earnings, you might not even have a chance. So it's just uh, kind of a more of a difficult trade. But I'd like to set up, there's a lot, there's big option activity going into the earnings. On the March options, 37 and a half. That's the ones I picked up today. And again, I'll put the, I'll, put the uh, I'll take the pause off here and I'll go back in the record m mode here. I decided that even though it is a, you know, I want to put it on the HPS, I want to hold it off the HPS and consider it talked about on this video. You know, let's just consider that we, we, we broke, broke it down a lot. We talked about the earnings. Understand that it could easily pop like it did here at last earnings. It would pop us right through our, our buy zone. It wouldn't even matter. Or it could gap us down right into the uh, stop and it wouldn't matter. It would just probably frustrate people on that. So let's stick to the discipline on that one and not give anybody a reason to get in uh, into trouble before this. With that said, I am long the uh, the setup just based off of the options. Trade dominant or YM oversold. Based off the activity, option activity there. <clears throat> now I see people in the chat room saying that uh, that uh, family, member, family members of Sunny worked in Korea 
and they said this Korean, South Koreans can't get enough KHC. Or KFC, KHC, I'm making one up. Now there's something on the bot that's not triggering any uh, selling, sell limit. I wonder if there's a stop on this one. Uh, maybe I activated the one that doesn't have a stop. <laughs> Another one I am looking at, now that we got that Yum Brands out of the way, that's Yum Brands, China Yum Brands, is the ISRG. IS. This recently came out with earnings. Intuitive Surgical. And it, it, it gapped and moved down. It had a follow-through day. I'm watching, I'm watching this one. Watching for a five to seven day pullback on this. So I'm just keeping an eye on that. Just pulling back into the bigger channel. So that's that. Whatever happened to WHR today? WHR came out with earnings. And it looks like the red arrow's down here. I mean, it's trading lower after hours. Let's take a look at a five minute chart. You know, I had this hunch that I wanted to go short this. And I also wanted to go short 3M. 3M is going to be tomorrow morning. So this is kind of uh, pay attention to that tomorrow morning. Again, it's always, a, you feel like you want to gamble, but, you know, that wouldn't have been a bad gamble. Whirlpool, Sears going under. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the uh, trades today. And then I want to go and just kind of give you a roadmap of some of the divergent setups. We were talking, that's the first thing we talked about today is um, the divergent setups and how important they are and how to get those into your playbook and into your, your method of trading because it's they're so good and again the person with the most patience probably is going to do the best in this market waiting for those those setups anytime you have a setup you can identify and you're going to get a you're going to get the edge in your favor it's just about the next thing you have to do is have the discipline to take the trade have the patience to wait for the trade to come to you have the disciplines to take it and the discipline also to take it off and not get too excited about it because every everything depending on your time frame is um, just that based on your time frame so if we see a slight divergence here on the one minute time frame just right there and there and a little higher you're going to get a nice little move but it doesn't mean the bigger trend is not going to change so what I'm looking for and I'm going to I'm scrolling through the charts right now pretend we're pretend the day is going on and we're here at Day Trader Radio, and I'm going through, and it's 4.30 in the morning. The market's getting pretty active now, 4.30. So I'm watching things. If I am watching it, if I am at, at there, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for that certain setup. I'm identifying channels. It's easy to see. And again, this is going, I'm going back a couple days here, so we have a lot of, a lot of review to go through here. There's a nice downward channel, and I'm going to try to find these established steep channel lines. And inside those, lots of times we're going to get divergences. Not all the time, but lots of times we will. Um, you can see that the, the embedded stochastic here, the 6010, has been embedded. And these, uh, these bare flag, these what we call bare flag, will rotate up, push up. This one pushed up above the 20, but in most cases, you're holding under the 20 and you're rotating up, and that's strictly kind of a, a negative setup, so you're going to look for further downside. It wasn't a divergence here, but you did get eventually got a pop, and we continue to move. So let's just go through this, just like the market's going on, and I'll tell you what I'd be watching for and see if we if we react. So market here, op, you know, six looks like there's probably news out, and again, this is going out to last week. So I'm not really, um, yeah, I'm just going back and, and playing the, the video game, watching the electronic snake here and kind of identifying any good setups. All right. <clears throat> we noticed a pretty decent flag here. 
on that rotation. I was watching that rotation come back here. And this started to turn back up. So between the fast rot rotating down and the 60 here on an upward rotation, that's usually the five minute time frame turning up. You also had this, you know, this, the 40 also pushing up. So there's a, this is giving me the longer term trend is strong, but the short term trend is weak. That gives us a flag or a pullback in a stronger trend. So that's why we identify flags. That's why that's almost our second go-to type of trade. Um, as the, as, as the uh, market continues to trade, I'm, I'm really just waiting for that key setup. Now this was looks like a Martin Luther King Day type of futures trade. Uh, that was Martin Luther King then opened up on Tuesday again. Tuesday night, or yeah, I guess that was Tuesday. This is overnight. Now, um, setups I'm not going to pay attention to as much as overnight. I do have the bot running overnight to kind of identify those. And today, right after I get done with this video, I'm going to be updating the email alerts and hopefully have those things set up so you get those overnight alerts if there is any divergences. Here we start to feel there's something growing here. And the reason is you have a pretty tight channel. It's almost a, a wedge pattern. You can see um, we're not making a full rotation. But we're holding above that 20 line, and it's, I, you know, I wouldn't consider it a great setup, but we are holding that 20 line compared to back here. And at this point, as we're just drifting here, we're starting to hold here. So there's a change of the rhythm here. Now we're starting to turn up right at this point. We're starting to break higher. Um, you can see the rally here starting to play out here, but that, that I wouldn't say that was a, a good setup. I don't think most people could recognize that. Um, and again, some days you're going to have no setups, you know, that's the key to being successful in trading. It's not the force to trade. The more active you're trading, here's a great divergence right here, 720 divergence, and that, uh, you know, and we could find those divergence between seven o'clock and, you know, up to about 12 o'clock noon and then a little afternoon, a little bit more, but you, you'll notice that in the morning hours, things are going good, and you get a, maybe a little fast, little flush. We could identify those divergences much easier. In this case, uh, there was some news. Looks like there was some news here. But right before the news, this candle flushed down to the 200, and the stochastics here turned up right here. Hold, giving us a nice lower low on the price, but a higher low on the stochastic. That really was a good setup because right after that, the market exploded. All right, so bring one in for the uh, divergence. Now, I probably was watching this. These are tradeometers. Anytime you see a circle or a square on the, on the chart, I put the tradeometer. But the tradeometer uh, signals there. Now, is there a divergence there? No, I'm not seeing really any divergences. But we're on a lower, we're on some kind of trend line there. And then um, it might have been a five minute. I'm not going to go into it. That's a, that's a good time frame here at 10 50, 11 o'clock. And we start rotating up. Now we start to rotate up and we get up here and we're very, we're feeling some strength in the market. So when we feel that strength, we're actually seeing that strength on our 60-10. It's embedded up here above 80. And every time this pulls back and we hold the 20-period moving average, that's considered a bullish flag. 20 here, fast rotation. 60 holds above 80. Price holds above 20. It's called the 2020 flag. It's an HPS high probability setup. Once you start to see this rotation, you could take that long as this pulls back towards 20 and you're holding this up, the odds are that the price is going to hold to 20 and we're going to move up. Here it is again. Boom. 
Second flag. Off to the races. Um, now we have a big pattern here starting to form. Following that up. Now this ends up being a very bullish pattern because we break out to the upside. Just like a bearish pattern, flags, uh, wedges sometimes can break to the downside. It's a capitulary move. Here we're just me measuring it out. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm not sh short into this. I want to always have my signals. And I think there was some news out here. There's probably China news or wall news or politics. You could feel the strength and the volume came in. And that's, that's how that day ended. And then the overnight session again. This is Wednesday the 26th. That's all the way back. Oh, wow. Look how far I'm back. I'm way back here. The 26th. I want to I wanna fast forward all the way up here. I didn't realize I had so much data here behind us. But, you know, that's the... That's what we do. I mean, every single day, we're outlining the roadmap of the markets. Identifying a divergence. Here was a beautiful sell side divergence and a fast breakdown. A couple of tradeometers. Here's a tradeometer. All right, here's a decent divergence. <coughs> it's a pop and a fast drop. fast drop giving us a lower low well, look at the higher low here it's really starting to hold up now we got to push we got to push up on this you know say you got in late say you actually got in there and today well i didn't get that much and it pulled back whenever you have a divergence you have to let the divergence play out by placing a stop under the divergence pivot low so as long as you got that pivot stop underneath here you're you're safe in some cases, you could get, you know, this is at the end of the day, and I wouldn't recommend taking this, so we wouldn't take this. But still, you know, the methodology works so well that uh, even if, at the end of the day, even though I don't like to take those because it gets volatile and very whippy, it does show you the uh, the setup. But you're not going to get that follow through because the market's closing. So it doesn't make sense to take that. Overnight trade, again, not paying attention to it. Coming to 3 o'clock, 3.30, European Open. Market starts to trend down. You can wake up at 3 or 4 o'clock, and you see this nice downward trend. You start to want to stalk that. Stalking, it means just follow that. Wait for that setup to come in. Maybe you get it, maybe you don't, but at least you're, you're there. I'm not seeing anything yet. 5 o'clock. You, you are getting some rotations. I mean, there's there's reasons to, you know, all right, oversold, triple stochastic, oversold level. Overbought to oversold, to overbought to oversold. Very nice, very nice. I mean, you could do that. Order, Order pending. pending. Here was a divergence. And this divergence actually popped higher and it looks like there might have been some news i don't know what was going on here and then eventually came back down so i would actually say that the diver divergence it pulled back a little pulled back to the 20 but that should have gave you a clue right there and this is again comes with trading that the, the 60 period stochastics were above 80 and this rotated down to 20 and the price was holding above the 20. So even though we had a divergence that divergenced, and this happens a lot, you have a divergence, a sell side divergence, sell signal, turn into a buy signal flag. The buy signal flag trumps, trumps the divergence. Because you're starting to see, you, even though you got that small pullback, that's as much as the market's going to give you. And you should see that because we're embedded on the short term time frame and we have our fast rotation and we're holding the 20. All right. Um, let's 
continue on. Starting to see a double top divergence here. Lower low on the stochastics. Kind of a higher high or at least a double top right here. I mean, this is, you know, something to kind of give you a little indication of possible trend ending. And you can see this did kind of just drift lower. That's all we're looking for. Here's a beautiful divergence, a very steep one. I think we took this one. And that was just, I mean, that's one of the strongest divergence because it's so steep. Now, a lot of the, the you know, a lot of the terminology you'll hear, a steep, a steep divergence versus a shallow divergence or a sloppy divergence. Steep divergence is between the low and the lower low, but a very steep low and a higher low. The higher the secondary low is, if it, it's even better if it's straight line and never really turns. That's a very steep and good divergence there, and that's a good reversal candle here too. Um, from that point on, a nice move up. You got a tradeometer set up, a little small little pullback. So good setup. And again, I'm just pointing out the obvious, the, the method, it works. Almost flawless. Almost flawless. There's always a, uh, there could always be a, an issue of news Sometimes you could get caught in what we call buy programs, um, sell programs where there will be an, you know, an aggressive, I like to say, manipulation of the markets by a, a large order being put in there and taking out stops and, and stuff and causing the market to move artificially in one direction quickly to see it reverse and come back. But it does take out the position. Anyway, um, a little divergence here. You know, the combinations of the divergence always, they, the odds increase depending on the type of candlestick you have. So if you have a nice reversal candle, either on that or like we just showed you before, a big reversal candle here, those are going to add a lot uh, to the setup. Now this pulled back a little, chopped around, and never really got back above the high, which is good. I mean, it would have, the, the, the setup was successful. So we're just rolling through. You do this enough that you can just scroll through these pretty fast and actually just see where a divergence would be. You know, there's just a criteria here. It's very s simple to see. Order filled. It's like a profit being, or something being taken off there. I don't know what that was. All right. Um, good example of a steep divergence. Here's your price and a quick little flush and a reversal candle. This right here, this candle right there, is a decent reversal candle, big candle, high or low, and off to the races. How do you how do you disprove that, Johnny? There's a divergence there. You know, I say show me a divergence, and I'll show you a market that moves in the direction of the divergence, nine times out of ten. All right. Here we have a, a steep divergence. I did take this trade. It was a very fast and a very good one. And again, even this, these would have been much longer, even though you did get good trades off of this, 14 to 24 point moves, you know, um, this still did held above the divergence low. I mean, it actually went much higher, eventually got back up to here. You guys hear me okay out there on the uh, in the chat though, just to make sure. I was trying to do this kind of a an open show for you guys, but trying to be focused. Here's another example of another divergence. 
All right, thanks, Fro. Here's a nice little move and a fast a divergence is usually going to happen when you have that fast, quick move down. That happens so fast that the stochastics don't react. And you have that low, lower low, low, higher low, off to the races. So, I mean, these are just key areas key key setups I'm not showing you anything that you can't just say all right yeah you're right it's hard not to disprove that what about this one Johnny here's a low and a, a candle reversal candle yeah well it did move up into that that level um, here's a bunch of bunch of flags even though this is not holding the 80 level eventually we did come back above the 80 rotated back down here to the 20 Hold that price at the 20, popped, pulled back again, held the 80. Apparently, I was already talking about this. I can see my notes or my lines on the chart. Flags, flags, flags. Perfect. Um, I know the hard part of trading because I still, you know, sometimes can't pull the trigger on every setup. Or I think that there's something, you know, that's about the you know, blast the market and the gonads. But over time, you got to take these. That's how, you know, that's just it. You got to get into the batter's box. You got to take the swing. You won't get them all, but you have to be part of them to let the odds play in your favor. You can't pick and choose because you might just pick the one out of 10 and then get totally discouraged. You got to get back on that horse and uh, take each one because, as you can see, the majority of them work great. Now, here's a divergence here. Now, let's say you see the divergence. You get in and you're, you, you know, you're late. You're not going to have the perfect entry. Well, that's okay. Most of the time, you're still going to get that nice move. Now, is it going to be, a, you know, the big part is understanding that it comes back into an overbought level. And at what point are you going to, like I, I say, smoke the hopium and hope for a further move or realize, hey, you got from 602 to 604 and change, almost 605. That was the easy trade. That was the layup. Now you're taking a three-point shot if you think you're going to get here. See all my great analogies? Anyway, at that point, you're extended. Your, your high probability setup is, is out the window. This was it right here. And even if you get a half a point, you're a winner. You know, take it off. It doesn't matter because you know what? There's always going to be another one coming down the line. All right, so... What are the best places to find divergences? Lots of times it's when a lot of volume comes into the market, a lot of chop. So usually around news and around the open, it is tough at that point sometimes. But that's when you can find a lot of these. Towards the, the uh, you know, I would say early in the morning after the market opens, sometimes a market divergence will define a bottom in the market. You know, a total reversal of the day, a low of the day, moving higher, that, that will be defined by a divergence. Now you have sell side divergences too. You know, and they work just as good. Here's a, here's one right here. I mean, it's obvious enough to, to put the, you know, the methodology and the, and the rules are so strict. You know, I've made these rules so strict that it's easy to identify them. Two stages, one, a high, and a higher high, a high, and a lower high. And a nice move down. Now when the rotation comes play into play, you have the decision to make. Plus you have other indicators to help you. Two in a period moving average, a pullback to a support line, you know, these, this whole bunch of stuff going on here, S1, the previous low, and a 200, and an oversold, yeah, I would say, all right, I'll take what I can get on that and move on, because the next one is going to come 
right down the pipe. Could have been a divergence, but I wouldn't chase this because it's not good. It's not, you know, again, don't try to make it fit. You know, make, don't make that square fit in that, into that round hole. Waiting for that perfect peg. <laughs> Another analogy. Great, Johnny. Keep it, keep it coming. There's the 17th. All right. Here we have a series of divergences, but not much of a pullback. So what is this telling us again? A divergence will work. But a, tr a divergence is trumped by a triple, st a, a triple stochastic setup where the stochastics are embedded above 80. The price rotates back to 20. The price is giving you a pullback, but we're holding, the price is holding at 20. Now, it's, it's chopping around it, but it's basically holding. I always say holding the 20 means part of the candle is touching the 20. So... That worked for a small pullback, but you got to recognize that was, that's your, you know, your kryptonite of that divergence is the flag setup. Same thing here. There's a slight divergence. It's very hard. To, I, you know, I wouldn't even know if I would want to, and that was a fast move down. And it gets choppy. But you can see a series of divergences here. Each one leads to a little pullback but then a little grind back up. And this is kind of a choppy thing. This is right around noon. This wasn't really, this was kind of a reach on the divergence. But you had it. And then here you had a divergence and you had a tradeometer. <clears throat> so that brings us to what we call the super trade or the super signal. Super signal is when you do have a divergence and you have a tradeometer that comes in during the divergence, buy or sell. A tradeometer could give you a, a buy signal or a sell signal. If it gives you a square and you have a you know a, a sell signal, and you have an obvious divergence and a very steep one, you're going to get a bigger move and a, a good move. Now again, everything's based off the time frame. It doesn't mean it's a super move and it's going to go down 100 points. It's just giving you a higher probability that the trend is going to, the pivot's going to work. It's probably a, a good shot that the, the underlying trend channel will break down as called in the divergence. From that point on, you had a little reversal candle here. 200 period marriage. 200 period marriage <laughs> I'm losing it here. All right, here it is. Let's go out a little bit further. Oh, look at this divergence. This was, uh, this is, this is the one that you, you just want. You don't want to miss this. Downward channel, identified, divergence inside of a flag. The breakout happens. Perfect. I started taking these too. Might have been some news here. I'm just going to roll through the rest here real fast, see what we can see, spot. I like this type of action, boom, 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 boom. It's easier to see those divergences. Nothing's nothing there. All you have to do is wait for it. Because it'll show up and it'll be easy enough to see. Now you have so many things here working for you. You have the divergence robot that is identifying them every day. I mean, it's obvious to see that, that that is working great. Here you have a low. Here's your reversal candle low. That big candle right here, reversal, it spiked lower. Has that spiked lower? You can even tell from there. Look at the high low there. This trend line, downward trend line, when you have a divergence inside of an established channel, the odds of that channel breaking out are really good. So we're going to look for that. And of course, that's what we had, a breakout. Look at the big move there. Wow. There was a slight divergence here, a slight move. 
But again, you have almost an embedded stochastic in a fast rotation. So you have a buy signal defeated, defeated by a bear flag. Downward channel line. This is a divergence I was looking at, and I said, ah, there might be a divergence here, even though it didn't really qualify. But it did, as you look back, it kind of did move. But back here, there was a qualifying one, a little better divergence. Right there in that fast little, and it moved nice up. It moved, you know, from that point on, it did move up pretty good. Again, if, even if you put your safety stop underneath the divergence low, from that point on, um, 65 to 68, eventually got up to 70, 71 before coming down and taking out the divergence low. But, you know, hopefully you don't have to be in that trade that long. I didn't even see this one, but I could see right now. This is a 21... 21 20 overnight trade Sunday night a little pullback here a low and a little pop and then a little candle low and a much higher divergence there and from that point on you got a nice little pop and this is overnight a nice little overnight pop there four points not that I'm you know looking to trade the overnight but I would like to have those signals sent out to the members letting you know that there is a divergence and that you have the option to maybe turn on your computer, take a look at it, and maybe take a trade and make a couple hundred dollars, you know, watching TV at, at night. Because these things work. All right? That's what I'm going to working on next. I might close this video down. It's already over an hour. And I'm going to work on the uh, alerts right now. Go through this real fast. I see anything not really and again this could be all trap this could be you don't want to just get bored and say I need to make some I need to make something here I want to I want to take you know you saw what works you see what works right you do see what works it's up to you if you have that discipline and the patience to let it come to you or let me identify it for you or you're gonna just run wild in the market get chopped up, eventually burn out, and make revenge trades. It's easy enough. I'm just scrolling through there. So I'm just looking for one setup. And if I see it, I want to mark it. And if it work, doesn't work, it'll be easy enough to see. You know, I'm preaching out, and uh, I don't want to do that anymore. I think I'm probably getting a little overboard. That wasn't even a divergence. This is a close to a double bottom divergence. This is a different take on a divergence. It's sometimes you have a candle, a closing price, and the price comes back down to that closing price, but it's much steeper. And I call this a closing price divergence. And it has a downward channel line. So if you have that closing price where both prices with the closing candles are doubled, you know, that same level, but the stochastics are much higher on the second return to that double bottom. <coughs> that's a that's a, a beautiful divergence and then right after that we had a sell side divergence and then you had a buy side divergence and this is back and forth you're bing bang and you're making money here left and right up to the upside back to the downside here's the low lower low a higher low steep divergence back up to the upside and then the markets markets move back down but tell me one that didn't work. Tell me any of those that didn't work. Hey, they all worked. A couple tradeometer setups. And again, putting it all together. Put it all together. You know, have that tradeometer. Remember, if you see a divergence and you all of a sudden you see that diverge, uh, tradeometer signal, that adds, adds to the setup. It makes it even a better setup. And that's just going through as many days we just went through, two weeks, and we showed you every, almost, I think, every divergence worked there. Every single divergence that we're identifying worked. So 
So, I mean, this is even good for anybody to go over and just kind of reinforce it in their own minds how well these things work. Look at this divergence right there. One of the best, sweetest looking divergences. That was Monday. That was today. I took this. I think, yeah, I took this trade. Oof. Yeah, hell yeah, I took this. And uh, <clears throat> boom. And then we had a flag. And a pop and then a drop. Now this is the one that I took also and I got chopped out of it. I was leaving for lunch. And I said, all right, is this a little divergence here? And I should have not have, you know, it was more of a chop session. And I wasn't seeing it. It came down and hit that. Remember, we want to see a space between the stochastics pullback from the, the low. And this is just not, you know, I think I was reaching there. We came back. It was still kind of just choppy around here. And then it popped and moved higher. And then you had a... Divergence here with the channel breakdown and double top divergence and another pullback. And that was about it for the day. And this is where we are right now. Probably was a little divergence right there too. I didn't even, what was that, a little after 20 hundred hours? Well, we saw that one. That one was identified on the trading bot too. The bot identified that one. I'll try to bring that over to you so you can see it. Right here. Divergence. Exit. Something's wrong. You got one contract. Something, I think there's a trailer or something. I'll be working on that in a few minutes. Anyway, so that's it. That's a wrap on this video. I want to get this out to everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. That's what you get here at Day Trading Radio. And it's important, you know, make your business plan. Establish, you know, the way, way you want to trade. And just think how important it is just to lock in, you know, lock in that profit. Wait. Have patience. Let the next set setup come, repeat, lock it in, wait, enjoy, don't stress. Money will come. It will start building. Wealth will start building. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. So hope to see everyone out there trading with us here at Day Trading Radio. And again, people at Day Trading Radio right now, I'm talking to you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the markets tomorrow. I'll, I'll be uh, doing my script scripting now on the bots. So you can you can hang out and I'll talk to you guys in the in the chat room now, if I can. It's eight thirty. I don't want to stick around too much longer. But let me see if I get any <coughs> fix up my alerts fast. Have a great evening, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. DayTraderRadio.com.